Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the movies in my collection that I have directed by Christopher Nolan. Um, so yeah, Christopher Nolan for me is not one of my favourite directors at all. I do actually find him quite pretentious. I do have a bit of a hot take as it were on Christopher Nolan. I do think his movies are very very interesting though and are certainly the topic of discussion. Um, I don't think any of his movies are particularly bad. There are some that I do enjoy more than more than others. Uh, I don't think he makes trash uh, at all um, in my opinion. I think there's, there's, there's good and bad things about all of his movies. Um, but yeah, that being said, not one of my favourite directors, but I do think he's got some interesting things to talk about when it comes to his movies. Um, and I just thought I'd give my thoughts and opinions on the movies that I have from him in his collection. So there's going to be no short films um, in this discussion, um, just pretty much the feature length movies. Um, and I'm just going to give my thoughts and opinions on each one that I have. Um, and yeah, just remember these are just my opinions. They're not. It's not gospel. It's 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 just what I got out of these movies. And um, there's no right or wrong to this. Um, so yeah, that being said, gonna kick it off with the first movie in my collection from Christopher Nolan, and that is Following. Um, now for me, this is a movie that I thought looked great. Uh, I thought the black and white really really added to this movie, but. Apart from that, I, I, I just couldn't get into this movie. I couldn't connect with any of the characters. Maybe I'm just missing something um, with this movie. It's the most recent Christopher Nolan movie that I've seen. Um, <clears throat> but it was just one I couldn't get into. Maybe I'm just missing something with this and need to give another rewatch. Let me know down below in the comments, you know, uh, is this a great movie? Is it re well regarded? What did you get out of it? Um, because for me it was just really, really bare bones and I struggled to sort of find any enjoyment from this film. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, it's it's certainly not a bad movie. I respect it. I, I just didn't really get any enjoyment out of it at all. But that's just me. Um, so yeah, that's the first movie I have following. So coming up next, we have Memento. Now, this is what I really, really did get into. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Um, <coughs> I respect it so much. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. The way it sort of tosses the three-act lineage of storytelling out of the window. Um, <coughs> and just takes on this whole new way of telling the story, which I just absolutely enjoyed. I think this and Pulp Fiction really brought a breath of fresh air to the way movies are told. Uh, I absolutely enjoyed the cast and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, you know. Um, Guy Pearce, Carrie Ann Moss, I thought they were just great, um, and I was just hooked. I was just hooked by the story. Just thought it was it, it was absolutely fascinating. Each scene, I was just wondering where is it going to go, um, and yeah, I just don't really want to talk about too much about it or get into spoiler territory because I think this is a movie that you need to go into knowing as little as possible. Um, you might find it confusing, but I think once you've seen the whole movie and you've seen the whole picture as it were um you really understand what's going on and yeah like i said it was just a breath of fresh air so yeah that is memento so coming up next we have probably one of the christopher nolan movies that doesn't really get talked about that much um and that is insomnia um this was a great crime drama that i just absolutely dug i thought al pacino and it was great robin williams um was fantastic in this movie um breaking away from his usual uh comedic type roles that he does uh i think this and one hour photo really showcased his talent um as an actor uh i just thought in in those two movies he was absolutely phenomenal um hillary swank's great in this movie as well um <coughs> if you like your crowd dramas this is a must must say because I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. Um, I think it really does need to be rated higher on IMDb as well. I think it has 7.2 or 7.3, which is absolutely criminal. should be at least 8, um, in my opinion. And, yeah, I just... I enjoyed it so much. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Again, difficult movie to talk about without getting into spoilers. But it truly really is phenomenal, and it's great to see you know Pacino and Williams in a movie together and Christopher Nolan getting really good performances out of them 
it was just it was just fantastic i i really enjoyed it dark movie but totally worth checking out so yeah that is insomnia so coming up next we have the dark knight trilogy now i'm going to discuss all three of these movies in in this segment because uh although <coughs> some movies chris nolan did make between the trilogy um so kicking it off first with batman begins um i've grown to love that movie quite a bit um it <coughs> it's a, a bit of a coin toss for me between which ones do i prefer between batman begins and the dark knight um but like i said at the beginning of this video i think the christopher nolan movies do have their pros and their cons um, I think Batman Begins is a great Bruce Wayne movie rather than a Batman movie. Um, I do think it is kind of kind of slow at first to get going, um, but it is very very interesting, to say the least. See Bruce Wayne, what happens to him, why he went away, and why he chose to become this crime fighter. Um, it really is a, a, a great movie. I do, do find it has this really sort of horrible orange tinge to it throughout you know, the Gotham sequences, which I just really couldn't get behind. Um, I think the villain of, uh, well, in this movie, as he's known, um, Ra's al Ghul, but I'll always call him Raish because of the animated series. That, to me, is gospel when it comes to Batman. Um, but, yeah, he's not probably not one of the more well-known villains when it comes to common audiences your average cinema goer um comic book readers of course will know the character um you know, he's probably batman's greatest second second greatest enemy in my opinion um certainly his most powerful um but yeah i do think it overall batman begins as a solid movie um dark knight now when I went to see The Dark Knight at the cinema, I think I came out of the cinema thinking that was the best movie I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't wait to own it. Um, I just couldn't pick anything wrong with it when I first saw it. And I just thought it was phenomenal. But over time, I have noticed the cracks in that movie a, a, a hell of a lot more, if I'm honest. Um, I don't think it is this bulletproof movie that a lot of the majority of people seem to make it out to be. Um, I do think with with The Dark Knight, I do think people really need to sort of put their feet on the ground with that movie and calm down a bit. It certainly is, it, it, it borders between good and great for me, The Dark Knight. Don't get me wrong, I do think it is a, it, it is a solid movie, um, but for me personally, there's just things about it that I don't enjoy as much anymore as it were. Um, I do think it does have its flaws. Um, some of the editing in the, the sequence involving the scarecrow i think is absolutely abysmal even to this day watching that sequence i have trouble finding out what's what's going on what's it's very choppy it's very quick um it doesn't serve as the story i think very well or what's going on in that scene uh, i think some of the extras in the sequence where harvey dent is turning himself in are taking the piss uh to be brutally honest i think some of them are just making faces um because they know they're on they're on camera and I think as well the Joker's plan at the end for it to go as well as it does is a very very far-fetched a lot of things could go wrong with that plan and they just don't seem to from a script perspective um, as it were um, but having said that I do think it is a very solid movie um, just I do think it has its cracks and it is a tad bit overrated in my opinion um but there is there's good there's good things to be said about it um the opening sequence for me is absolutely immaculate um i wouldn't change a thing about that it's it's phenomenal um you know the pacing of this movie is great um it it just it flows so well it really works so well but another negative for me um is probably um Heath Ledger is the Joker now not because of the performance or anything like that I think it's an amazing performance but I think it hurts the movie because he's so good um, he overshadows everyone else 
Um, it's like nobody else gets a look in in this movie. Nobody else ever gets talked about. He just completely steals the show, and it just kind of doesn't. It feels like a one man show. It just, it, it you know, and a movie shouldn't shouldn't really be like that with a cast as good as this, as this cast. He he, he just steals it from everyone, and nobody really gets gets a sort of bite of the apple, as it were. Um, you know, that's that's really you know another another negative I could add to the film. Um. But yeah, it's you know it's people love it. I get why people love it, but it's just not this bulletproof movie for me that a lot of people make it out to be. Um, but yeah, moving on to Dark Knight Rises, um, I don't like it at all. Um, if I'm honest, not for me. Um, too much ambiguity, um, shall I say? And I don't really like that in in my Batman media. Um, it doesn't really work. It's too much of a Christopher Nolan stamp, um, and it just it didn't work in in the Batman story for me at all. Um, I saw the twist coming a mile away when I first saw it at the cinema. I thought the sequences with Bane and Batman when they were fighting I thought were absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'll give that to the movie, but there's just some things about the movie. I didn't like at all. Um, the bit of the stock market where all the motorbikes come out and they've got the, the hostages on the back, it, it had me pissing my pants with laughter. Um, and this movie, I don't think that, that that was the movie's intention at all. It was just silly and I just it took me out of the movie completely. Um, hated it. Um, didn't like Anne Halfway in this movie at all. I thought her, I thought her performance absolutely sucked. Um, if I'm honest, just did nothing for me um this movie and it was just such a downer the way that, the, that this trilogy ended um really really disappointing um the the robin shoehorn just, you, the way that was just forced into the movie i i i did not like it at all um it wasn't for me but i do think there's something to definitely be had out of the first two movies in this trilogy certainly well to a degree the third one as well it's not awful I'm not saying that, I just didn't get into it, I didn't like it, but from a technical aspect, it is a great movie, um, but it wasn't for me. Um, but yeah, that's the Dark Knight trilogy. So coming up next, we have the movie that was directed between Batman Begins and the Dark Knight, and that is The Prestige. Um, great concept, if I'm honest, I absolutely love movies about magicians, and the sort of, that sh showmanship. Um, and this movie really does capture a great rivalry between Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. Um, but having said that, again, there's just something about this movie for me that is stopping it from being great. I don't know what it is. I think there's a missing ingredient. I just, I don't know. There's just, there's just something about this movie that did not click with me. Um, I do think it is a good movie. But, like I say, it just didn't strike that enjoyable chord that I have. Um, and it just didn't make for rewatch value for me at all. Um, it's a movie I respect, certainly. But am I going to put it put it on multiple times? I don't think so, unfortunately. Because um, I want to say that about every film. Um, but, yeah, I just I, I couldn't get into the prestige. Really, really... It, it wasn't for me on the rewatch value. But like I said, I do respect it. So coming up next, we have the movie that was directed between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Uh, and that is Inception. Um, I absolutely love this edition. This is from the uh, the briefcase set. And it has a fantastic lenticular slip, which I just absolutely really love. Um, yeah, great edition. Um, I just think is great. Um, absolutely phenomenal cast. Um, this movie to me was an absolute mindfuck, um, if I'm honest. Dream within dreams, great concept, great cast, um, and just visually really, really good. Where I think the special effects in the Dark Knight trilogy were sort of used to a bit of a, a minimal. You certainly couldn't tell, um, in my opinion, you know, the if. Um, what was CG and what wasn't. Everything sort of felt grounded and everything sort of felt felt practical. I suppose in certain scenes with the vehicles, 
um, you could say. But for me, this this one, you know, it, it had to use CG to make this film, and it does look great. Performances are great. I think this sort of really sort of put Tom Hardy on the map as well. Um, you know, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Um, great lead. Um, and yeah, it was just. It was a bit of a weird movie, shall I say, just because of how ambiguous the ending is. I think this is where I find Christopher Nolan a little bit pretentious, though, because I think I think he sort of says sometimes if you don't get my movies, you're a bit of a dickhead. Um, that's just me. That's just what I get out of his films. Um, but yeah, because because of how this movie ends, it's very ambiguous and it's it's very sort of. It, it was confusing, shall I say, you know, it took me sort of multiple rewatches to get into it. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Very, very, um, you know, it triggered a lot of questions inside my mind, shall I say. And I'm sure it did with a lot of other people as well. But overall, on the whole, I did enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that is Inception. So coming up next, we have Interstellar now. This was a movie I was really, really pumped for and really looking forward to see um, because I thought Dark Knight Rises was very disappointing to me um, and I was looking forward to seeing you know, this, this, this space movie directed by Christopher Nolan. Um, and for about 80% of this movie I really enjoyed it and very similar to Dark Knight Rises, I hated the ending. Um, really, really didn't enjoy it at all. Um, and that was really what I sort of took away from this movie was the ending and how much I didn't like it. And everyone was saying, oh, Interstellar's great, it's fantastic, it, you know, it really needs to be seen and appreciated. And I was just like, the ending to that movie sucks. I, I, I just think it's really bad. You know, I couldn't get into it. Um, <clears throat> but having said that and having gone back to it, I think because of my dislike for the ending, it really sort of overshadowed the quality of the first two acts. Um, and it's certainly nothing, you know, nothing can really take away from those first two acts because I do appreciate them a hell of a lot more. Um, so much so that now the ending doesn't really bother me that much or as much anymore. Um, I really do think that this is a Marvel spectacle um, of a film. Um, you know, it was part of the McConaissance as well. Because Matthew McConaughey was an actor I really had a dislike for. Um, I just couldn't stand him. He was churning out these shitty rom-coms all the time. I was just bored of it. I was just like, do something different. Do something original. And then he did movies like Mud, Dallas Buyers Club and Instella. And I was like, thank God this guy is doing different stuff now. He's just completely changed my opinion of him. I love it when an actor or a film does that. Um, and, you know, this was a step in the, you know in the right direction for him because he's just such a, a great actor I've got a lot of respect for now um, but yeah and he's, he's great in this film um, it's one of the ones I'd say from Christopher Nolan's body of work that I didn't like at first but it has absolutely grown on me um, and I do really really enjoy it um, my sort of enjoyment from the first two acts has I've really really overshadowed my dislike for the third act and I think overall now it does make for a good film. Um, it's just it, it looks phenomenal, and um, particularly the space, the you know the sequences in space. I just really, really enjoyed this film. So yeah, that is Interstellar. So coming up next, we have Dunkirk. Now, I think the problem with this movie is, for me anyway, I. I think this movie suffers from not having a plot, um, if I'm honest, like a, a cohesive plot, as it were. You know, the plot is pretty much we need to get these these soldiers out of this situation, um, and that's really it. It's very ambiguous in its storytelling. I think um, visually, I think this movie is an absolute masterpiece. It looks absolutely stunning and phenomenal. Um, that is certainly this movie's strong point. Um, the cast of characters as well are great, but I don't think we spend enough time with them, um, if I'm honest, to get to know them. Um, again, sort of hindering more towards why the plot doesn't really work for me. 
Um, but on a visual technical level, I think this movie is an absolute marvel. It's so 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 good. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Um, I just think it's absolutely great. Um, I can't really say much more than, it, than that. Um, but yeah, just visually very very pleasing. Bit weak in the story, but it delivers with the visuals. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I know saying that something delivers with the visuals doesn't make for always make for a great movie. Um, but for me. I did actually really enjoy this one, and I do think it is one of his stronger movies, um, if I'm honest. It doesn't really have that long of a runtime either, and it just absolutely flew by for me, um, and I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that is Dunkirk. And coming up in the final movie uh, we have is Tenet. Um, this for me is probably one of my favourite Nolan movies if I'm honest. I know a lot of people didn't really take to this movie, didn't really like it. Um, for me personally, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Robert Pattinson is again sort of doing the same thing as Matthew McConaughey. He's choosing interesting roles. Um, I know he's sort of breaking away from... His, the stereotypical Twilight shite that he did. Um, but I always say never forget your roots, never forget where you came from. Those movies put you on the map. Um, as bad as they were, um, you know, they brought you your fame. Um, but still, though, I'm glad that he's now doing more interesting projects like The Lighthouse, Good Time, Tenant, uh, Maps of the Stars. And if I'm honest, I'm kind of really looking forward to seeing what he does with the role of Batman coming out in the next couple of months um, really really intrigued to see if he goes there and he was really fitting in this movie um, I thought he had a great cast you know, Elizabeth Debicki uh, Kenneth Branagh just absolutely phenomenal um, John David Washington as well um, Denzel Washington's son I absolutely loved him in Black Klansman. Um, I adored that Spike Lee movie. I thought it was great. Um, and he was superb in this too. Um, story again was a bit confusing. But I've sort of grown. To learn to accept that with Christopher Nolan movies. Um, and yeah. It was just. Still very enter entertaining. And very enjoyable. I know a lot of people maybe found this. Found it to be pretentious. Um, I do find Christopher Nolan to be pretentious, but I didn't get that as much with this movie. I don't know what it was. Um, I just found it visually very, very interesting and very intriguing. Um, like I say, it's one of the ones that I don't think gets as much love. Uh, I think people would go as far as say they really didn't like it, but for me, I was quite the opposite. I got a lot of enjoyment out of Tenant, and I just thought it was great. Um, really, really Phenomenal stuff, if I'm honest. Really had a good time with it. I think maybe because I'm not such a big Christopher Nolan fan, going into this movie, I had low expectations. Um, and I was kind of surprised, um, to say the least. Um, but yeah, that's all I can really say about Tenant. Um, I enjoyed it on the whole. I, I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, so yeah, those are my Christopher Nolan movies that I have in my collection. So... Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on the Christopher Nolan movies. Um, what are your favourite ones? Um, you know, do you have unpopular opinions like me about him? You know, I certainly don't think he's a bad filmmaker. Absolutely not. On the contrary, I do think his movies all look pretty stunning. There's just some I enjoy more than others. Um, but yeah, that being said, I'll leave the video there, guys, and say thanks very much for watching. Stay safe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.